how many players do you reckon will end up with the bench up? There's 55,000 ex-footballers in the country. That means you could have about 27,000 of those players who will get dementia. What's doing my head in is that nobody's being told. Six of my dad and his teammates died from the World Cup team. The odds of that are about 150 million to one. Worried about myself and all my mates. It was only when my dad passed away I realised how much he meant to be. Did your dad think the ball went over the line? Well, my dad had terrible eyesight. He was one of the first players ever to wear contact lenses and he was 40 yards away and he said it was mild up. <laughs> <laughs> how are we doing, you lovely, lovely pill? Now, I can't believe it. Talk sport, we've had it back again. It's me, Tom Skinner, and of course, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Razor Ruddock. How myth? are you? Myth? Well, you're never here. You're one, minute, you're one minute you're on the other. Hold up. Oh, I've come from Sheffield this morning and I beat you here. You did, yeah. You've come from Essex. No, right? I, was, I was actually... Oh, you come from Talk Sport? No, and then I had a meeting afterwards. Then I Why don't you do out. the meeting after me? I'm more important than anyone. But what I'm, I'm a myth. <laughs> How you been? <laughs> I've been all right. Last week was all right, wasn't it? How good was it? Oh, it was crazy. I had breakfast, lunch and dinner here last week. <laughs> Where? It was great. Sure you slipped up early doors I as well. Did, I'm sure it won't be the last time we did that. No, it won't be the last time we did that. So, <laughs> anyway, we got a great guest this week. Who we got? We got John Styles, son of Nobby Styles. Really? The World Cup winner, Manchester United, a legend. Very, he, very funny man. You, you actually said that you was funnier earlier. I am funnier than him. The <laughs> what, do you want to know the difference between... Do you want to know the difference? <laughs> do you want to know the difference between an after-dinner speaker and a comedian? Yeah. It's about two grand. <laughs> <laughs> But he's got a great story. He's got, you know, it's an heartwarming, sad story. He's going to come, we'll yeah. go have a laugh, and he's going to, he's going to tell us all about his, all his problems at the minute. About dementia, isn't it, yep. today? Serious subject. Um, In fact, with ex-footballers. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah you know. I mean, I, I don't know anything. I honestly don't know anything about it, so I'm, no. I'm looking forward to having a chat with yeah, John. Yeah, I've spoke to John about it a few times, but it's still, you know, it's still hard to, to grasp, but he's going to come on and uh, tell us all about it. So, tell everyone, you use, your dad, obviously your dad's Nobby Styles, a great yeah. World Cup winner. Was you a footballer? I was. Did you try to follow it? Follow I was. His I, uh, I played for Leeds United. My, my uncle was Johnny Giles, who played for Leeds United. Yes. So uh, I played for Leeds and I'm in the history books at Leeds United because I was the first Leeds United substitute ever to be substituted. Injured? I, I, can, uh, no. Right. No, no, just crap, really. What position was you, Johnny? Midfield. Like the old man? Midfield or substitute. Well, Take away take away the pace and the talent, and I probably was a bit similar to him. Yeah. yeah. So you know, I often compared him to his dad, and compared to his dad, he was. Yeah. <laughs> well, he was a legend, wasn't he? His like, dad was a legend. But John, like you know, so so I just got to ask a question. Yes. So you went. Was it, you, was it your first? Was it your first game playing for Leeds when you went on and got subbed? No, no, no. Place. I'd been in. I've been in the team. I made, I made about 85 first team appearances for Leeds. And growing up as a kid, Man United didn't look after my dad when they left. So in our house, we were brought up as Leeds fans, really. Wow. That's so bad, isn't it? I actually was. About, I consider myself very fortunate that um, I played for the club that I, I used to watch Leeds playing and imagined that I could be playing. And I did it to uh, to not a great degree, but it was an honour just to pull the shirt on, really. How did you get into comedy? Well, if you see, you see me play, Razor, I'll show you the videos, you'll understand. <laughs> um, <laughs> what, what, what I did, uh, I finished playing, I went into insurance, I hated that, and then I went into football agency, and I hated that even more. Oh. Um, and my dad was on the after dinner circuit, so I drank, and then I did a bit of emceeing, and as you know, I do a few voices um, and all that. And I'll come do them. Can't really do them on this format. Um, <laughs> you can say anything. Uh, uh, Chris, Chris Eubank. <laughs> so there's a ver various. Few. Can so do some right in, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> please, it's brilliant. You Chris. Uh, Chris, Chris, Chris Eubank uh, comes home one day and he says, he says, Mum, Mum. <laughs> And I, 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 won't do the, I won't do the, I won't do the rest of the, I won't, I won't do the rest of the gag because I'm, I'm not getting paid enough. <laughs> so, uh, so that sort of sticks. In, and if I'm honest, um, I broke into the comedy, do a few voices and all that. And it's a brutal business. If you don't go down well, you don't get paid. Yeah. So, uh, but having said that, possibly if they're thinking of a comic, often you go and see a comic, you can't remember the name. Yeah. They remember my dad. 
So, uh, and I, I do a couple of little quick stories about my dad and what have you. So. Growing up as Nobby old son, you must have met some, some of your heroes early doors. Well, the thing is, he had a stra really strange childhood because other people, you know, he, I used to go to the cliff training ground with my dad and he'd take us in and I'd hold George Best's watch while he had a shower. George Best. Oh. And like, if I'd known who he was, I'd have got in the shower with him probably. But anyway, uh, no, <laughs> but it's so George, and, and, and literally Bobby Charlton was Uncle Bobby. He'd yeah. come round the house. So they were just humble men, you know, great footballers. And so you think, but at the end of the day, my dad and Bobby were both really humble, private family men who, yeah. who happened to be great footballers. So yeah. it was strange and you don't, you don't realise until you get older, yeah. you know, that what I didn't, it was only when my dad passed away I realised how much he meant to people. Yeah, oh, he was a hero, wasn't he? Yeah, well, yeah, and it wasn't just, excuse me, it wasn't just the football, it was the kindnesses he did yeah. for people. So, yeah. Yeah, so. so I met him, I don't think about it, he was always very nice to me, I only met him a few times, he always came up yeah. to me and made, made me feel special, you know what I mean, he was that yeah. kind of man. Yeah. So. Well, they were pro proper people, weren't they? Yeah. And yeah. like, you're not coming on. Spell it on. Spell The Space Boys and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, there, was there a um, in the World Cup when he? Because he was only a baby. He was only two. Yeah, I can't remember. So when the World Cup, he, when there's a story that he, they, they they wanted to drop him or something. Yeah, there was a, there was a mass campaign in the media to get him out of the team, and the reason for that was he'd kicked a Frenchman. You get a knighthood for that nowadays. <laughs> so, so. Uh, what do you mean? During the game, he, yeah, he, no, he, no, he, he was a bad tackle on a fellow called Jackie Simon, yeah. and he got booked. And a FIFA official from Northern Ireland went to the FIFA and said it should be a sending off. So my dad would have been out, but it was the first time they'd had a TV panel. So all the panel, all of them said Styles shouldn't play against Argentina on Saturday. All of them, wow. in the press, Styles shouldn't play against Argentina. And what so, round would that have been? Would that, is that the start, was that a knockout round? It yeah, like? it was now into the quarter final. Okay. So they come out of the groups. Yeah. So anyway, my dad said that um, on the Friday they, they do the free kicks and corners. Now Ramsey came over to him and he said, um, Did you mean it? And he said, No, Alf, I just mistimed it. I didn't mean it. He said, Right, you're playing tomorrow. Now, my dad's the only person in the country who knows he's playing the next day. So. What my dad later found out was Alf Ramsey was then summoned to the boardroom at Highbury and told by the England selectors, under no circumstances does Nobby Styles play tomorrow. He said, I'll resign. Wow. wow. He said, I'll resign now. So he stood by him. The rest is history. So, 66, yeah? No VAR, no goal line technology. Did your dad think the ball went over the line? Well, my dad, had terrible eyesight. He was one of the first players ever to wear contact lenses and he was 40 yards away and he said it was miles over the line. <laughs> <laughs> so, so John, your, your dad, your father, Nobby Styles, absolute legend, sadly passed away mm. um, of dementia in 2020. And I've been seeing you on, 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 on Twitter campaigning about dementia and about what, what's wrong with, you know, with football and, and what they're being taught. And I love what you're doing, mate, but help us out. What, what, what is, I understand it. You know, yeah. we don't, both of us don't know what it is. Well, so. I, I didn't. Um, my dad started off losing his memory and it was a well, slow, early slow, times. Yeah, yeah, he started losing his memory, he was about 60, but we think he even started before that, probably looking back. So it was the memory loss. And then as time goes on, because the damage is at the front of the brain, we, we had a spell, it was dreadful, where he, he got terrible paranoia, anxiety. We couldn't calm him. And he had to be next to my mum. It was awful. Chris Sutton's dad, Chris Sutton told me his dad was, the, seems to be very common with the footballers, probably because of where the damage is. So we thought he had vascular, we were told he had vascular dementia and Alzheimer's. And then somebody rang me up and said, it probably isn't that. It's probably chronic traumatic encephalopathy, CTE. So then I started doing my research. I spoke to Willie Stewart, who's leader in the field. And then, it was, it was anybody who watches their loved one go with dementia, it's, yeah, it's a yeah. dreadful disease. So it, w it was awful. And then when dad passed away, we talked about donating his brain. So he passed away, literally, we were stood over him. And my mum said, if one person is stopped from suffering the way mm. your dad was, we'll donate his brain. We donated his brain, he came back completely riddled with CTE, CTE. Wow. chronic traumatic, no Alzheimer's. The footballers have this very, this very common thing where they have this terrible anxiety and I think that's the worst part because this, this 
person you've seen strong, independent minded, you know, resourceful, all of a sudden is a frightened yes, person. Yes, crazy. And, it, and it's uh, and it's awful. And I just want it. I just want people to, to listen. I yeah. want people to listen, and I want to get help to the, the people who need it, and I want the players to know about yeah. it. What, what is the end goal? What is the? Well, the end goal is that thousands of footballers don't die. Yeah. And that's what's happening. I, I need to make this really clear. I need to make this really clear with this message. Yeah. Because it relates to him, it relates to me. Yeah. In 2003, a disease was discovered in America by Bennett Amalu. He'd been looking at NFL players' brains. And he found this disease called chronic traumatic encephalopathy, CTE. And what it is, it's very simple. Every time you get a head impact, a protein called tau breaks off. It's tiny. And if you don't head another ball, if there's no more impact, it settles down. He didn't. He's headed thousands of balls for yeah. 15 years. So what happens is this tau protein clumps together with other tau proteins and creates a tangle. It settles in the brain and basically destroys it. Wow. It wow. stops it. It's as simple as that. And it's, it's and just... this was 2000 what? This was 2003. Wow. Now, it, it, a coroner, called, uh, a coroner told Jeff Astle's family about 20 years ago that head in the ball had killed him. And nothing was done. And they looked at Jeff's brain again later, I think in 2013, something like that. And he had, C he had CTE. Wow. I know of four other families who've donated their dad's brain or husband's brains. All of them CTE. It's not rocket science. It's what happens. So what's, what's doing my head in is that nobody's being told. Oh. Yeah, there's no warning about did, it. Did yeah. you know about it? No, no it's, um, it's, well, it's that's so started, interesting. I mean, it, exactly. This starts. In, this started at a young age. Then. This is well, 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 this is the other thing that's even more worrying. So, five, five of no, it's six, six, six of my dad's team, six of my dad and his teammates died from the World Cup team. The odds of that are about 150 million to one, right? That's it. I've looked at it. The same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's Man yeah. United team. But oh, I know what, I spoke to two other players last week, championship winners. Yeah. They think they're getting it. And they will be getting it. Yeah. Because it, it's what happens. It's just the process. You look, you look, it's, 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 you like, no one's listening to you. No one's. No, no, because, because they don't want to listen. It's not good news. No. Yes. It's, well, I suppose like when, like even when you start football training, you, you know, if you, you talk to the the ball. And you're in the training session, you might have the ball 100 times, yeah, 150 yeah. times, like, do that three, four days a week. Yeah. Yeah. And then you do that for 10 to 15 yeah. years. Willie Stewart studies, this is all, by the way, science based. I've yeah. researched all this. Willie Stewart studies has shown that the, depending on the position you played, because you've edited the ball more, you're even more likely to get it. Yeah. So it's, he says at the moment it's between three and five times the normal, what the normal population will get. More like, players are more likely to get this, this dementia, this CTE. And it starts in the late 50s, early 60s. So it's there. And nobody's doing anything about it. Yeah. Now, if, if you had a functioning union and yeah. players were dying of a disease from doing the job, they'd be in there protecting them. Of course. But the PFA don't. I can, I can guarantee it. I bet Kyle Walker didn't know about it. Harry Kane, Lucy oh. Bronze. Oh. No, they don't told, know it. Yeah, told about it. Yeah. No, no. And I don't want to ban heading because it's part of the game. I mean, no. don't start him on about his header again against Man well, United. Free, free. That, yeah, well, yeah, well, you that, drilled that, it that, Is that the one that's been voted <laughs> greatest header of all time yeah. in the Premier League? That yeah, one, the yeah. high score. Yeah. Carry on, not so you, be so, so you don't want to start, you know, get it wide, get in the box, yeah, score yeah, a yeah. great header. But in the matches, they've worked out, usually the maximum you've had it is about 10 times. It's the training. Yeah. yeah. It's the train, it's the 10. I worked it out that my dad would have headed the ball between 70 and 100,000 times. Chris wow. Sutton said he will have headed it at least 70,000, probably more. Chris has been quite active on yes. this as well. So, John, what, like, is there, like, like, look at rugby, they wear scrum hats to protect their heads, yeah. you know, like, like NFL, I mean, they wear helmets, but it obviously doesn't work. Well, but so there's nothing, even if you wear an helmet or a cap or nothing's no, going to. No, because the brain's going to, the brain's going to shake, that, yeah. the brain's going to shake, the brain's going to bleed, and the tail protein's going to break off. Now, what what is. Like I say, doing my head in. I, I've been campaigning three years now, and I'm still yeah. waking up angry in the morning. Yeah. I've got families ringing me in bits because they don't know what they're going to do because they've got to pay for the the long term health care costs. No, no, we have Mate. no PFA helping these families. You know, I mean, no, I think I think it's one of your tweets is that, that, that people are still in their houses just to yeah, get John, treatment. The McNamee family were told by the PFA 
don't worry, there's a, f a fund going to come and then you won't have to sell your house. Didn't come. Sold his house. Then they created a fund that's a million pounds, right? A million pounds. Yeah, that's not going there's, there's, there's a million pounds in the fund. That won't even take care of 10 families' long-term care costs for a no. year. It's a, it's a farce. It's a pittance. And then the chief executive gives himself a rise of £150,000 a year, so he's on 650 grand. This is the union that's supposed to be helping and protecting these people. So the families are selling the houses. Now, the McNamee family, they looked at the fund, and they know the costs, and they said, it's only a million pounds. We're not going to try and get any of that, because somebody else needs it, and Oops. we've got some money. That's the, the oh, sort of yeah. character of the people that you're looking at in this situation. So so what, 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 what do we what do? They yeah. You obviously spoke to the PFA. What, you just... I, I, uh, I had a meeting with them uh, right at the start and I was told that they would put actuaries onto it to go and find these people and find out exactly how big the problem was because then they could say they've never done it. Oh. It's, they've done a, a cat-handed, put it out on social, if you're a footballer, fill this questionnaire. And, and, and it's just a joke. It's a joke, yeah. but it's not, it's not a funny joke. Oh, it's, scandalous. It, it's scandalous. Yeah. So, how many players do you reckon will end up with dementia? So, so the national average is about 10% that get dementia. Not yeah. everybody does get dementia. You think no. they do, but they don't. So, yeah. Willie Stewart said the three, three to five times more likely. Now, there's 55, I think there's 55,000 ex-footballers in the country. That means you could have about 27,000 of those players who will get dementia. This is the other thing. So, I'm talking about the professional game. There'll be lots of players who played amateur, non-league, semi-pro. Yeah. And they love heading, yeah. and, and they they will have had, they're at risk. I mean, because my dad didn't know because I my dad used to love playing head tennis. Yeah. At least if the players are told, they can. Oh, yeah. I won't do that, yeah. or I won't ask for extra heading training. So a, a more serious podcast today, and uh, I've learned a lot. You yeah, I've learned a lot, yeah. Yeah, and look, if you you know someone that's suffering with dementia or. You want to learn more, you want to find out some more information, listen, just get in touch with John. He's more than happy to answer your questions, isn't you, John? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And look, let's try and push this out. Let's try and spread the word, because I didn't know about it. Razor didn't know about it, and he played professional football for years. How many balls written you had over your time? 50 times a day. Yeah. Easy. Can, can I just say one quick message? Of course. Don't let your kids have the ball. Well, how about that, mate? What a guest. Mate, I, like, I feel like I've just learned something, well, I have something brand new I never knew about. No, well, you think it's, it's worrying, really. I'm like, worried about myself and all my mates. I mean, I'd yeah. say 50 times a day, that's happens my game. Yeah, but, Smashing heads, bang, banging heads. He said six out of ten of his dad's team yeah. ended up with dementia, yeah? Law of averages, that's not... You can't, Mate, no, like, right. like, 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 all, like, all jokes aside now, like, we have a laugh all the time, me and you, but... Mate, I'm worried about you and, and, and all your teammates. That's yeah. it's crazy. I'm, t I'm glad he. Uh, I'm glad he came. I mean, sad story. He got a bit emotional as well. He's a, of course, yeah. he's a lovely man. You know, I mean, he must and he must just break your heart that no one's listed. I what mean, missed? all the people that that are in control of funds and helping ex players, they just don't want to know, do they? No. Shame, but what a good podcast that was. If you want to find out some more information, you want to learn more, you know, there will be links on this podcast. But also, get in touch with John. John is happy to talk, he's happy to teach you about it. Listen, we've learnt loads today, and uh, that was the Men's Room podcast with myself, Tom Skinner, and the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Razor Ruddock. Bosh. Bosh. Yeah,